Hello! We're back again with Mr. Reeboxes. What's inside? The answer is something computery because we're in the uh, centre for computing history. Do you see how that goes? Video games and that in it. Right, we have in... Ooh. We have in this one weird cards. That's always a good stuff. Ooh, weird cards with printing errors. That's jolly, isn't it? These weird pod people. Let's go with this. The Castle of Ven. Blimey, but in the Castle of Slip. Ah, Little Professor. Right, I know what all this is about. Little Professor, the electronic learning aid that may not actually be in the box. <laughs> right, a Little Professor. Imagine a calculator. Well done! You now know what a little professor is. My god, there's some doors slamming somewhere. Somebody's had an argument. Um, yeah, it's basically a kind of calculator that you could sort of play games on, but not really. I think the building's collapsing. We're going to keep going. We're going to power through it. Um, yeah, oh, you also open the top flap, and exactly the same picture as below. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's it's a very primitive game thing uh, that your parents bought you because they thought it would be educational. Um, a far better option was something called a Major Morgan, which was similar, but played tunes and had a cheery-looking soldier on it because he had not yet been killed in battle. Right, we have here a power pad for quick shot. This looks suspiciously like a PC. Oh no, this product is produced exclusively for the Acorn. What, as in Electron or the Acorn Archimedes? It looks a bit later, do you know what I mean? Um, for all 32-bit Acorn computers it will indeed be the Acorn Archimedes in that case. My goggly... yeah, it says on the disc. My goggly goodness, that is a heck of an expansion. I don't know much about the Archimedes, but I do know you could buy this awful control pad. That they've written on it, SNES control pad. Despite the fact it's clearly for an Archimedes, how bizarre. So they want you to think this is like a Super Nintendo controller. It is in the sense of the button layout, but joypad ain't up to much. It's not terrible, though. For Third-party pads were always terrible back in the day, but uh, that one doesn't look too bad. Go right, around. Back in your box. Go over here. Make some friends. Right, here's a bag. Oh, God, things have fallen out of it. It's a cable. On one end is the same connector as the other one. It's a Fono cable. That's nice. This is... Oh, it's one of those! I've got no idea. Um, well, there's got phono output. Copyright 1984 Applied Engineering. It looks like something uh, to computer. Viewmaster to CRT. Ah, right. So this is something you would plug into your computer in order to connect it to a uh, television of some type, by the looks of it. Maybe it's for a computer that you could only connect to a monitor and you plug this in, then you connect it to a uh, TV. I have genuinely no idea. I'm just going to put it over here and hope it doesn't catch fire, frankly. Oh, look, here's the bag. It probably came in and fell out of. Uh, next up. Oh, my God. Sam Computers Limited, the Sam Coupe. Oh my God, so if you wanted to plug a mouse into your Sam Coupe, you had to plug in this giant box and then plug a mouse into it. Blimey, no wonder they never bloody caught on. Right, um, what we got here? A mouse. <laughs> With a crazy connector on it. Couldn't tell you what that is off the top of my head at all. It's a three-button mouse made by Logitech. Tampering with label voids warranty. That was me using a mouse. Hmm, don't know what that's for, but it's an interesting design, something obscure. Here's the little professor. Oh god, it's... oh hang on. We can fix the little professor while we're at it. They run on nine volt batteries. Um which I don't have any of, so I can't turn it on. But frankly, it's not very exciting on, it's just like a really old calculator. But yeah, this keeps falling out. This is going to be the rest of my life now, just putting this back in. That's my job. I look after the little professor. Um, can we demonstrate with these cards? I think there's a thing with the card... Oh! I saw this. I thought the cards fitted over the top. I must have got it confused with Major Morgan, because it clearly doesn't. Anyway, that's a big professor. Right. Next up. A Thompson MO5 64K memory extension. Oh my god, I wonder what that's for. I couldn't tell you which machine that's for, but it's uh, a very non-internal memory expansion, to say the least. Um, must be sort of late 80s, because 64K would have been crazy huge in the early 80s. You'd have been able to fit like half a game on it, it'd have been amazing. This is... Ugh. I don't know. I love it already. Oh, this is some sort of... Uh, 
early attempt at a portable. It's a Scion PS1000 personal organiser, or trout tidal wave indeed. This is more like a cross between a personal organiser and actual computer. It's got Microsoft Works look, and it's made by uh, Reeves PLC apparently. But yeah, if you had to type crap on some horrible portable device before phones and other such useful things like laptops properly existed, you could actually fit that in your suitcase and it wouldn't kill your fingers. It doesn't feel awful to type on. It feels a lot better than a modern phone, let's face it, because they have no tactile feedback whatsoever. Um, what else have we got? We've got a Wii, as you've probably seen there, a Nintendo Wii. I think we all know what that is. Here's a PSP, Sony's PlayStation Portable. We all know what they are. There is a PlayStation Portable uh, power supply in the, in the box there. Here is a piece of clear plastic, which uh, looks like a spacer plate. Oh, it's for the Wii. This is what... Um, the sensor bar thing can fit onto, isn't it? That was exciting. And finally, mystery polystyrene. And inside, oh my goodness. A ZX80, is this is a ZX? It is. One of Sir Clive Sinclair's very first commercial computers, the Sinclair ZX80. Looks similar to a ZX81, but more horribly yellowed. Um, these were white originally. This one's obviously been out in the sun a bit. Ah, here we are, original colour on the back. God, it does just feel so cheap and hobbyist, and the awful keyboard, which is just nothing. You know, it's completely flat, and you're just pushing down buttons like on a crazy mobile phone, except you don't even know if it's working properly. Ah, those weren't the days. Also, there's a ZX80 ROM chip in there. Let's have a quick... Oh, no. Don't want to touch it, don't want to touch it with my fingers. There we are. That's its brain! Well, not that one's brain, it's external, but let's not worry about that. Ah, uh, those were the days when computers were much smaller and almost completely useless. So, box of randomness, what have you got inside? I hope it's ex Ooh, I don't know. British Telecom. Well, I reckon this is probably going to be a modem of some type or something. It's got oh, really rusty screws. It's seen better days. I tell you what, uh, let's look, work around it because it looks absolutely massive, actually. Crazy thing. Ah, this will be an old fashioned calculator. They all came in these leatherette cases. Leatherette's not being leather. Um, probably red. Yes, red display. Texas Instruments programmable calculator with horrible little clicky buttons. TI programmable 57. Probably collectors out there who like this sort of thing. One of them probably isn't Paul Grimwood, who presumably originally had this and donated it. Paul, you, the curse of Grimwood is upon you, for you have touched the deadly calculator. Either that or it's just calculate. That's more likely, actually. Uh, if you've never seen one of these because you're young or something, uh, just horrible red um, vacuum tube display of some type, I believe. Uh, they were awful days. But I tell you what, at least we didn't have to do it on our fingers anymore. Counting, that is. Right, next up is another calculator, I would guess. Ooh, it's a bit mouldy, this one. Wash your hands after touching the calculator. This one is a Rockwell. Never heard of them. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, oh, horrible squ... Oh, I was moaning about the um, overly strong keys. These are horrible and squishy and nasty. Ugh, ugh. Ugh. Can you do a sum for us? No, I don't want to touch it, buttons. A uh, different type of display, though. It's uh, not red. It's some sort of light blue colour. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Back you go to your rotten case. And we shall see... Um, I'm going to play this joystick. Apache 1 from Quick Shot. Oh, my goodness. Which uh, sort of computer does this connect to, then? The answer is any of the old 8 bits or 16 bits from the UK. And, yeah, it's kind of... It feels quite new, actually. I don't think it's been used much. Um, as you can see, it's got us kind of... Well, it's supposed to look like a helicopter control, hence the name Apache 1. You've got two buttons, but they both do the same thing. And it's uh, a bit squishy, like they all were back in the day. It's not a bad one, though. A uh, quick shot with generally quite good for um, acoustics. But I tell you what, they did vary a lot in quality. Next up, Super Warrior, the Lethal series. Oh, yeah. Seriously, it actually says the Lethal series on it. Crikey. So there's another quick shot joystick, one I've never heard of. A must-have for PC pilots. Ah, it's a latter-day one. Beyond my time with such things, I think. So it'll have, yep, an old PC game port connector. And, oh my god, look at this. All trim controls um, for your analog stick. Man, you can really go left and right on that. Back and forward's got a fair good movement as well. Multiple buttons, which I think would probably all do something different. The top of the controller is quite interesting. It looks like Robocop. Or a snake that's choking on a big smarty. Oh well. It's got turbo fire as well. That's made my day. Let me get the box out of there actually so we can look at whatever the flipping heck this British Telecom thing is. 
Oh my goodness! Look at this thing! But it's got Bakelite, which is like a really early brittle plastic. My god. Um, Maplin Sportsman. So it's a, it's a crikey! Almost homemade looking, it's so primitive. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those games where you can actually telly and play Pong on. With all the different dip switches that change settings. Oh god, it had a rifle controller. Oh, it's not in here, that's a shame. Um, and a reset button. Marvellous. Oh my goodness, that is a heck of a thing. Maplin, incidentally, uh, if you are uh, non-UK, is a shop a bit like Tandy, an electronic shop. Still going to this very day. Um, yeah, I think we're going to need some room for this telecom thing. I'm really confused by it. Oh, we have controllers for it. They are paddles. A little bit more mould in the thing. The fire button is literally just a really cheap switch. <sighs> Lovely. Right, go down there, you. Whilst we try and work out what the flipping Eccles cakes this thing is. British Telecom. What? It feels a bit heavy for a moment. It's like a television. Uh. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Get a load of that. Maneuver it around. It's a bit smashed up. It's some sort of la early, la well, I was going to say a laptop. I mean, you could, could put it on your lap, but it's like a big CRT telly. So it's like a very portable computer, I would imagine, for specific British telecom purposes, because there's buttons like phone directory, service directory, manual redial, help, end call. Is it a diagnostic computer that British telecom engineers would use on the road? Not anymore, because it's hidden that day and half the buttons are missing and it's all cracked up. But other than that, interesting device. I'd like to see that uh, switched on one day, but um, frankly I think it would probably catch fire and kill me. And as much as you at home would like that, it ain't gonna happen.